This is the SAU Report, a program featuring interviews with the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia. Welcome to the SAU Report. I'm Braden Harmon. And I'm Jeff Grissom. Today our guest is Coach Adcox, SAU Athletic Director and Chairman of the Department of Health, Kinesiology, and Recreation. Coach Adcox, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. What exactly does an athletic director do? Jeff, I've been trying to figure that out for the last two and a half years. Uh, really, it's a multifaceted job. Um, it combines uh, such normal uh, athletic duties as scheduling, fundraising, administration of all athletic events as far as game management is concerned, actually participating with, uh, with the various uh, departments on campus uh, in, in, in all aspects of uh, uh, administration of, of college athletics and dealing with the NCAA, the Gulf South Conference. I'm the direct uh, liaison, so to speak, between the president and our athletic staff. Uh, and basically, my door is always open. Uh, if you were to come down in my area, you'd see that uh, the foot traffic in my office uh, never ceases. Uh, so I deal with a lot of uh, basic day-to-day -day problematic areas in athletics, uh, including not only the coaches, but uh, also the athletes. And uh, it's an it's a, it's a interesting job. There's never uh, any time for much reflection unless I stay late in the evenings, which I generally try to do. And uh, it, it keeps a person busy. Uh, Coach, what are the differences between a college athletic director and a high school athletic director? Oh, Braden, I don't think there's a, a lot of differences. I think uh, in, in, in both areas, both on the, you know, the secondary level as well as the area in, in higher education, uh, athletic directors you know, have to be people-oriented individuals. You deal with so many different people. On the high school level, you're going to deal a little bit more with the involvement with the parents, uh, perhaps even uh, various other school organizations and functions, but it's basically the same. It's, it's still scheduling, it's still game management, it's still administration with the, with the, uh, the coaches themselves, uh, and there's not a lot of vast difference there. Okay, um, what are some of the major prerequisites for being an athletic director? Oh, you know, I, I kind of like something that uh, old Lou Holtz once said, and, and that is, you know, when he, when he talks to various groups and, and, uh, and, and goes out and uh, is hired for $10,000 a, a speech, he says really three things. And that is, you know, are you honest? Can you be fair? And do you like people? And I, I really tend to kind of believe in that, that statement. I think you have to be a, <coughs> a people-oriented individual, again, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I think you have to have a genuine love for athletics and sports, and not just men's, but women's also. I think you have to love ba basically all sports, or have at least a desire to know more about them. Uh, gosh, I've coached everything from, from track and field to uh, baseball and basketball. Uh, you have to be pretty well-rounded, but I, I really think you have to have a genuine love for, for all sport activities and a desire to be around people and, and if you enjoy that type of thing and are gregarious and don't mind going out into the public uh, I, I think you know those are basic qualities needed to be a good athletic administrator. Coach are you still coaching on any level college high school junior high? Anything? No uh, the job that I currently uh, hold here uh, Braden is simply uh, athletic director I no longer coach although uh, uh, several years I got out and and sometimes I, I wonder if I made the right decision because you really do miss coaching when you get away from it. Uh, my job specifically is, is athletic director. Uh, as chair of the HKR department, uh, I still uh, teach courses. I teach usually anywhere from three to sometimes nine hours a semester. And I teach those classes both on the undergraduate as well as the graduate level. Um, so no, I no longer coach. Um, I guess I coach from the stands like a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has two jobs. Uh, one is the one to get paid for it and the other is a coach. Right. You know, a lot of folks in the stands feel like they can coach better than those individuals on the, uh, on the, on the floor, on the, on the court, and on the field. But I, I really try not to get involved with the coaching. We leave that up to our coaches. They're hired to do that. And we have a tremendous staff that are excellent coaches and excellent individuals, and, and they do a fine, fine job of coaching our young people here at SAE. Okay. Um, when did you first realize that you wanted to be a coach? A coach? Uh, I think basically it was, it was an early age, um, and I talk about this in, in many classes that we that we teach over the years. But uh, you know, I don't see young people going out after school and playing basketball, baseball, football in the backyard or in some open field anymore. And there's various reasons why they can't. 
Uh, one of them, society doesn't let us do that anymore where kids can kind of roam and go to somebody else's house and play baseball. Somebody may snatch them or grab them. Uh, we're a latchkey society with both parents working. But when I came from home from school, it was usually after being involved in athletics. Well, I just carried over after supper mm -hmm. and you played and you got dirty and you got smelly, so to speak, you know. And I knew then that I was fairly good at sport. I liked sport activities. It gave me a feeling of accomplishment. So I knew early I was going to probably be involved in sports in some aspect. Like many people, I had aspirations for higher levels, uh, didn't attain those, and coaching was the obvious avenue after that. And I remember in high school when uh, uh, my high school coach would, would send in a play, I'd change it. You know, I knew then that maybe I, I had a, a niche for this. I, I didn't know how it would end up, but I knew very early that I wanted to, to be involved with athletics. What is your favorite sport to coach? Oh. Uh, you know, after 23 years of college football coaching, I have to say it was football. Uh, football to me um, epitomizes what college athletics is all about, not to say that, that other uh, athletic events don't, but uh, I like the physical nature of college football. I like the camaraderie, the team spirit. Uh, I like uh, the challenge that, that football presents both physically as well as mentally. And, but I, I probably, my best sport that I probably excelled in and probably should have played more was basketball. Hmm. But uh, football just kind of seemed to meet the, meet the time. What do you feel is the most difficult sport to coach? Oh gosh, I don't know how I'd coach hockey. Uh, I, I, I think perhaps maybe track and field. Uh, so many different events, so many different types of fundamentals and techniques. Uh, I think I could, could coach a, a sprinter, for example, but for me with my size to be able to teach a pole vaulter, <laughs> no hope. You know, it would say, you know, go practice and right. i watch you. Uh, I think track and field, uh, one of the funnest, if funnest is a word, uh, uh, sports to, to coach, but very difficult to coach. What coaches do you admire and or have had the greatest effect on your coaching philosophy? Oh, I, I think without question, right beside my bed as we speak is a, a new book on, on Vince Lombardi that uh, my daughter got for me, uh, followed by another book about uh, mankind, uh, the wrestler. I don't know where that came from, but uh, Vince Lombardi, uh, certainly. I think um, when I was in college at the University of Missouri, I had a, a great coach uh, by the name of Norm Stewart, who just retired from the Univers University of Missouri after 38 years of basketball coaching. Uh, he was an inspiration. Um, I certainly think um, uh, people like, and you all don't remember some of these names, but Casey Stengel, you know, there, there's some great, uh, what we call now old school coaches out there that, that definitely had, you know, um, a very, very big part of my life. Um, what changes, if any, have you made to the SAU program? Well, Jeffrey, I, I think in the last two years we've had we've had several changes one is on on the physical facilities uh, certainly what we've done at Wilkins Stadium I think has addressed an issue that needed to be addressed uh, for a long time but but funds are just not available uh, we were able to raise funds and dress up Wilkins Stadium to where it looks more like a college uh, and university stadium for football uh, that's been a big plus for us uh, when you bring a recruit on campus and parents especially if they're from larger schools in Arkansas and East Texas uh, Louisiana, their, their high school stadiums are bigger than Wilkins Stadium. Uh, just by bricking and doing the work that we did there uh, and improvements in the, in the coaches and, and the offices as well as the locker rooms uh, have made that facility uh, very, very comparable to almost everyone in our conference. Perhaps in some cases even better. Our locker room situation uh, with new lockers and flooring is probably the best locker room I think in the Gulf South Conference, bar none. And our coaches did that work themselves. Uh, so we made major changes at, uh, at Wilkins Stadium, and that project uh, goes on as we speak. We're, we're in the process right now of uh, still raising money for that. Uh, we made improvements in the uh, W.T. Watson gym uh, by going in and addressing the, the gym floor issue. The gym floor was getting old. It was outdated. It needed to be repainted, resurfaced, uh, scrubbed up, so to speak, and that costs money that, that really is not available that we had to go out and raise. Uh, so there's been some changes there. Uh, again, uh, baseball facility, we added new dugouts this year. Um, in the future, we're, we're going to look very, very close at, uh, at lights for the baseball field. Uh, if we ever win our conference uh, division, which we always are very, very close, uh, 
we'll have the opportunity to host perhaps the conference tournament here uh, at SAU, which will require lights because it requires going into, into evening and darkness. Um, we're in our second year of uh, women's fast pitch softball, uh, a program that we added last year that has been very, very successful. We hired an excellent coach in Kevin Bluskowski. Um, so we've added additional sports. We added swimming last year, softball. Uh, we're looking very, very closely now at, at adding some additional sports in the very, very near future. Uh, and I think that's something that you want to do in your athletic program. You want to be able to move on one area, facilities. The other is to hopefully add some additional coaches, but also some additional sports. And one of the things that we've done is also looked at uh, at getting some of our coaches some help uh, with assistant coaching positions and get those assistant coaching positions equal to other people in our conference because we're we're somewhat behind in the area of assistant coaches. Okay. Was uh, becoming an athletic director your ultimate goal when you came to SAU? Uh, you know, no, no. When I came to SAU, I came here because it was a it was a family situational move. Um, uh, I had never heard of Southern Arkansas. I was coaching as a head coach in at a small college in Nebraska. Uh, I came here basically taken one day at a time, uh, took the job sight unseen. Uh, fortunately, it worked out well for myself and family. Uh, no, I really didn't have a goal to be uh, the athletic director. Um, it just worked out that way, and, and I followed in the footsteps of a man I admire greatly, W.T. Watson, uh, who retired you know, a few years ago and, and continues to work as a fundraiser in the athletic department, does a tremendous job. But no, it's, it's sometimes in coaching. It's, it's who you know and where you're at at, at a given time. Um, my original aspirations as far as goals was to be a college head football coach, which I was. Uh, I had a goal at one time to, to work the Division I level, which I did. Uh, had opportunities to go back to Division I, and it came down to a family decision. We like Magnolia. We like the people of Magnolia in Columbia County. We love SAU, and uh, of all the schools that I've been at, which are several, this is the longest tenure I've had at any one place. So uh, it just kind of evolved to that. Um. Where do your athletes come from? What's your target area in recruitment? Well, basically, it's, it's South Arkansas. Um, for many, many years, it's been very, very difficult to get anybody uh, basically out of the Little Rock area in, in North Arkansas, although in the past few years we've made some inroads. There's just too many schools between Little Rock and, and, uh, and Magnolia. So our basic recruiting area is, is the southern Arkansas region, uh, east Texas, now into central Texas, uh, North Louisiana and Western Mississippi. Do you have a large staff to help you keep up with all the different schedules of all the sports going on at any given time? Well, uh, no, basically it's, it's, it's myself, but the coaches do a great job. Uh, they're, they primarily do the scheduling uh, and they've done an excellent job. The Gulf South Conference does a lot of the scheduling now, especially in football and basketball. We do the scheduling for non-conference games. Uh, but essentially our staff, if you looked at the athletic administration end of it, uh, there would be myself, uh, Dr. Lisa Colvin is our senior women's administrator, does a tremendous job. Uh, Steve Dingman, who works in our HKR department, is also our faculty rep. His primary responsibilities deal with, with eligibility of student athletes, which is a very time consuming job. Uh, we have Steve Sutton in compliance, who handles most of our compliance issues with the Gulf South Conference and, and NCAA, and they all do a tremendous job. Um, does coordinating and budgeting sports programs take the fun out of it for you? <laughs> well, it can. You know, uh, there's never enough money. You could always use more. Uh, we've been very, very fortunate here, Jeff. I, I, I will say this. Uh, we have an administration that, that believes in the value of athletics, that it has an integral part in a liberal arts education, which I, I think it does also. Uh, and we've been able to do some things that uh, our administration believing in, in the popularity of, of college athletics and what it does as far as getting our name out in Southern Arkansas University all over the country uh, uh, believes in what we're doing athletically. And uh, so when it, when it gets down to fundraising, that's, that's a fun part. Budgeting, uh, you know, it's, it's always a little bit uh, ticklish towards the end of the school year, but that uh, doesn't take the fun out. It's just uh, very time consuming. Coach, do you enjoy your job? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really do, Great. I tell you, uh, several years ago when I got out of coaching, it was a very tough decision to make. Um, I enjoyed a semester where at 3 o'clock I went out and exercised. I was able to go around and watch baseball practice, watch spring football practice, go in and watch volleyball. You know, I thought, boy, this is really nice. I never had this before. That lasted about three or four months where I started to get kind of itchy feet. 
and, and kind of bored, to be honest with you. And I really missed being around the, the athletes. Um, I really missed the camaraderie with the coaching staff. Uh, and I felt like, boy, there's, you know, I need to be doing more. And plus, I had this energy that you usually take out in the practice field every day uh, that, boy, you got to do something with that. So exercise took that place for a while. Uh, but it's not, it's not the same. So, you know, I, I miss certain aspects of coaching very, very much. Um, would I ever go back to coaching? Oh, I don't know whether anybody would ever have an old geezer like me, but uh, I'm old school. I don't know. Today's athletes have changed a great deal. Uh, it's, it's a young man's game, and uh, I think our staff, you know, we've got probably the best, and I've said this many times, I think we have the best athletic staff in Division Two. Wow. Hmm. Do you think that SAU students support um, various athletic programs adequately? Yeah, yeah, I, re I really do. Uh, I, I think we could always wish for more students at, at games and what have you, but certainly we know, you know, the limitations that our students have. Uh, most students are going to college, uh, you know, they're working jobs, uh, they're trying to get home on weekends. You know, that's, that's very understandable, but I, I think here at SAU, uh, to give you an example, we've led the conference, I think, the last three years in attendance at basketball games. Hmm. Uh, we're second in the conference in attendance in football games. Uh, if you wandered out to our uh, softball game on Tuesday of this week, uh, we played Texarkana College. There was probably 300 people there, which is phenomenal for a softball game, especially early in the, in the program. Uh, but, yeah, we'd like to see more students, but we've also got to have a, a draw for students. Uh, when you win, you draw more people. When you lose, you tend not to draw as many. But uh, right now, we're, we're comfortable. We'd like to see more students. And, and again, we have to market our programs a little bit more. We have to give them some more things to do. And uh, of course, the games are free to them. But gosh, there's a lot of things going on these days. Which sport is the hardest to coordinate? Oh, um, I think he, if you asked a, a baseball coach, he'd say baseball. If you asked a track coach, he'd say track. Um, I really don't know, Braden. Uh, as far as coordination from an athletic administrator standpoint, um, I would say, uh, quite honestly, uh, probably football. Uh, even though you only have maybe five or six home games a year, uh, there's so many people involved. Uh, people think, you know, games at 2.30, well, coaches have been there for an hour or two and, you know, er everything's just running smooth, but they don't realize that our day starts about six in the morning and doesn't end until about midnight when we turn the lights off and walk away. Uh, there's a lot of administrative, it seems like minuscule duties to do, but it's everything from opening the bathrooms, making sure that they're clean, to getting your concession personnel ready to go, uh, taking care of your uh, uh, visiting media personnel and perhaps even the, the presidents uh, of the other universities. It's a, it's a long day. So basically, even though that it only happens five or six times, it's, it's very time consuming. Hmm. Okay, which sport at SAU would you like to see improve the most in the future? Oh, I think I, I couldn't put a, you know, my, my finger on any one sport. I think I'd like to see them all improve. I'd like to see us uh, win the conference in every single sport. Uh, I'd like to see us dominate the, the uh, all academic teams, which essentially we are, uh, which we may lead to that a little bit later. but. Uh, I would like to see us continue to have success. Those sports that have not been as successful, obviously we want to get them to that level. And I think certainly we want to look at, uh, in the future, adding some additional sports. <clears throat> what do you say to the critics that complain about SAU athletics receiving too much money? Oh, you know, uh, walk in our shoes. Um, it, it, I will say this, it, it takes a lot of money to operate an athletic program, it really does. Um, if you broke down the cost of just a football uniform alone, I mean, the helmet is $125 a piece. A pair of shoes these days, you know, don't come cheap. Uh, basketball sneakers, uh, gosh, you may go through two or three a pair of those a, a year. It's not cheap. Um, I say that, uh, you know, uh, our athletic programs bring notoriety to the university. Hopefully it's, it's usually positive that uh, athletics certainly has its place among a liberal arts institution and that hopefully we spend our money wisely and we're getting uh, something for our dollar out of each student athlete that that performs and and uh, displays good sportsmanship on the field or, or court and that people are proud of our athletic program hmm. um, speaking of the budget and the financial situation do you feel that you receive um, 
enough budget to keep you competitive or to keep you competing with other Division II schools? Well, uh, I will say this: if you went school by school comparison, of course, a lot of the schools in our conference are much bigger in in, in enrollment areas. Thus, they're able to generate more athletic funds. Uh, we have one of the lower athletic fees uh, per student body. Uh, we operate a little bit and sometimes a great deal under most other schools, but we've been able to get by. Uh, obviously, if we had a little bit more money, perhaps we could improve our facilities, do some more things, but uh, uh, it's, it's basically enough for us right now to compete, and we're competing very, very well. Uh, so uh, it's wishful thinking, though. How important is SAU alumni and the SAU Foundation to SAU athletic program? Extremely important. Um, you know, basically our alumni are the people out there that hopefully after they leave school they, they've got a nice job and have settled into a family life or whatever type of life that they're, they're interested in and, and have, you know, uh, set a goal for themselves. Uh, our alumni, our foundation are the funding arm, one of the funding arms for our athletic program. Uh, Sharon Eichenberger, W.T. Watson, uh, our booster organization, our alumni leaders, the alumni board do a tremendous job of promoting collegiate athletics here at SAU and provide us with uh, some extra income that we certainly could not run our programs without them. So very important. Um, if, if there was one new sports facility or anything you could add, but just one thing, what would it be? What would you add or change? I think it goes back to something that the university looked at uh, early in, in, the, in the 1990s, and that was a possible convention type center here on the, the campus of SAU that would house an indoor track, uh, an indoor basketball arena, seating for say 10 to 15,000 that not only when we had major athletic events here on the campus, uh, but also be able to, to, uh, to house you know, outside interest convention type uh, uh, interest into the city of Magnolia. Uh, that was a project that uh, both, uh, both at uh, SAU and the city of Magnolia looked at and uh, several of us were on that committee. We looked at several locations. I, I think if we had a, a facility of that nature, like the, the convention center at Jonesboro or some of the other schools, uh, that can only help Magnolia, the city, as well as SAU. So I would really like to see something like that. Gosh, we could have you know mega track meets with 30 30 teams here, mm -hmm. indoors, out of the weather. Uh, we could have a big band come in. You know, we could have uh, Bass Pro have a have a Bass Master mm -hmm. Classic here and, and use the convention. There's a lot of things you could do. So I'd really like to see us do something like that. What upsets you the most about sports and athletes in this day and age? Oh, I don't think there's any question. I think it's attitude. Uh, holy cow. Um, if you look at what you see on the professional level, I think the money has gotten way overboard. I think the attitude of the uh, professional athlete today is disturbing to me. And, and we can look at various individuals I think we're all familiar with. Uh, they, they do not shine a very favorable light on, on, on the value of athletics and sport. That bothers me. Uh, I think sometimes uh, the overemphasis in professional sport really bothers me. I, I know it's a great spectator uh, uh, avenue and, and people really love it, but uh, the thing that bothers me I think is the, is the money in professional sports as well as the attitude of professional athletes. Not all of them, but many of them. Uh, and that has transcended down into college athletics. So. And it's transcended down to high school athlete, athletics. I see somewhat a lack of common courtesy, sportsmanship, ethics. Uh, involved in, in, in all levels of athletics, and that bothers me. That's not the way it's meant to be. This, this is a great opportunity. Athletics presents itself to each individual that's out there. And we, we should behave properly, uh, and we should abide by the rules, and, and that bothers me when, the, when that's broken. Coach Adcox, you've been a great guest. Thank you very much thank for being Braden. on our show. Jeffrey, thank you. With SAU Program, I'm Braden Harmon. And I'm Jeff Grissom. The SAU Report is a production of broadcast journalism students in the Department of Theater and Mass Communication at Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia.